Hi everyone, Dan back again. So I finally got round to sorting, well mostly sorting this Commodore 64. So basically, like I tend to do, I scour eBay for bargains and untested or faulty or whatever um, machines. And my sort of de facto sort of thing to do is to pick them up for about 50 quid or less and this falls into that category i think they snapped my hand off when i made a bid for this one uh, an offer uh, but there were a lot of problems with it uh, firstly i didn't even come with a power supply um so it took me a while to get the power supply i got one of those nice uh polish ones um nice polish ones from electroware which I think they use the mean well power supplies inside, but yes, I could have possibly scraped one together or picked one up, an official one, but um, may as well get the self future proof with that one since I didn't have one. Uh, and then we messed around a little bit with one of these, which is an 81 diagnostic car, because as you'll see in a bit, there were some problems with this machine and this really helped so yeah without further ado we shall have a look at the process of getting this back together and trying to sort the problems out and then we shall see whether it actually works now because it did for a while but does it still work okay Yeah, so I got this this Commodore 64 untested. As you'd expect, it didn't work. Eventually, when I did get the power supply for it, I could see that um, there was some life in it, but the screen was all garbage. The board itself, um, if you look at it, isn't in the best condition. It's a little bit worse for wear. It's probably been stored in an attic or something. The case itself was a little bit warped. You know, I'm not into making these computers brand spanking new and, you know, restoring them to their former glory. I like a little bit of uh, wear and tear. They are 40 years old, you know, so, you know, giving them a bit of a clean. So obviously the next step was to get a dead test cartridge. Um, but as you can see here, this is the aftermath of using the dead test cartridge. You can see some um, replacement chips on this now. Down at the bottom, you can see uh, the PLA has been replaced with a modern replacement. Because I thought I may as well get modern replacements for these chips if I need them. CPU is working and the SID. So they're all working nicely. So basically, I ended up replacing the, the PLA and a couple of the, the, ROM, the ROMs. The dead test cartridge itself is quite interesting. It's an 18 one cartridge and it has different um, different things on there that you can try. It's got the Jupiter Lander ROM on there, which is quite handy for testing because it, it, it bypasses a lot of the, the ROMs on the on the, the machine. Obviously the dead test as a SID test and all sorts of other stuff, keyboard tests and all this sort of thing. Initially I identified a problem with the RAM um, as it was giving me a a one flash luckily all the chips all the main chips on on this board are socketed so i did have uh, a machine with a bit of spare i had some spare ram so i swapped it over but as you'll see later on it wasn't the ram um and i and i since put the original chip back in but yeah it comes with a handy guide to show you possible um problems with the the machine you know, depending on what sort of output you get. So if you get no screen at all, black screen, a blank screen with a border. So, and I was getting this. So initially I changed the PLA, uh, which you've already seen down here. And then it sort of indicated there was a problem with the basic ROM and the kernel ROM. So I changed the kernel ROM to a modern replacement, which um, is quite handy as well, because it has got different kernels 
on there that you can switch around. I thought it might be, may as well get that because at the end of the day, I might find that useful at some point. But the main culprit was the basic ROM in the end. So what we've ended up with is three replacement chips on this board, which I would never have figured out probably without the, the use of the uh, this dead test cartridge. Very, very handy. So after getting those together, just a matter of uh, putting some um, little heat sinks on. I know, you know, not everybody agrees with having the heat sinks on. It did have a shield originally, this, this machine, but I find those pretty unnecessary and just a pain when you want to access things. So I didn't bother putting that back on. I'm going to put a few little heat sinks on some of the main chips. Perhaps I should put some on the CIAs at some point as well. But um, at this point, I wanted to just make sure that the uh, the main chips had some um, protection on there to prevent overheating, hopefully. I also noticed when I was um, testing that the, uh, the power switch had a, a bit of a dry solder joint and that got sorted as well. The case, unfortunately, is a little bit warped and it may have been put on it, stored really in a, in a bad place or a hot place or whatever, but it's slightly warped. It's not in the best condition. A couple of the posts where the screw holes are are, are showing signs of damage. But I did manage to get it all back in one piece after giving it a little bit of a clean you know, dirt-wise, it isn't in bad condition, to be fair. And I just really wanted to get the machine working. So we'll get it back all in the case. I don't know if someone has been in here before, I'm guessing they have, but some of the screws weren't very good, so I had to like, source some different screws. But we got them in, got the machine together. Right, so we've got this back together. It's a little bit warped, this case, but um, I can't really complain. Uh, now, so now we're gonna see whether we can get it, well, to see whether it still works. It should do, after swapping all those chips over. Let's grab the power supply. Right, so we're all plugged in now. So let's give it a test, make sure it's still working. Excellent. Excellent, excellent, it's working. Picked up a Kung Fu flash. So we'll see what it makes of this. 
Yay! Try to make you keep. Here we go. I think we have a working Commodore 64. Well, I've got to say, I'm very pleased that this is now fully working. It took a little doing and a lot of chips uh, replacing with uh, new components, but it's working. You know, it's it's a decent little machine in the sense of I didn't pay a fortune for it. These days, there's some silly money people want for stuff. It's not in the best condition cosmetically, but that adds to the charm for me. And I really wanted, like I said, a proper bread bin. Uh, that nostalgia for the... Because I had a Commodore 16, the same layout. But now I get to explore games again with this uh, Kung Fu Flash. Uh, and then there'll be plenty to, uh, to put on there to try out. So yeah, brilliant. I'm happy with that. So until next time, catch you later.